Okay, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to look at uh, a national beehive that's made from cedarwood. I'm going to talk you through the individual parts of the hive. And we're going to build it up into the tower that you kind of recognise when you see beehives in photographs. Uh, this is the stand. Splayed out legs, giving it a more traditional look. Uh, and at the front here, we've got this landing board so the bees can come in, land and then crawl up and enter into the hive through the front gate. That's the stand. That goes down first. Next we've got the floor. This is a perforated floor. You can see this perforated mesh. This allows parasites, bees, bees like most uh, species of, of animals, insects, etc. Have, have parasites, uh, little blood sucking mites uh, that, that, that kind of get inside the hive. Uh, this mesh floor, if any of the parasites get uh, knocked off the bees, they drop down through, go through the floor. They're connected on this yellow surface here. And as a beekeeper, you can pull this out, inspect what's on here, and that gives you a good idea of what's going on inside the hive. The, the front gate, uh, the front gate can be changed and moved around so that uh, you can make a smaller entrance for the, for the bees here. Um, that's really quite good and useful because hornets, wasps, uh, other bee colonies will try to get into the hive uh, and, and they'll get in there. Bees, other bees will come in and want to rob the honey. Uh, hornets uh, and wasps, they actually do prey on bees and they're quite happy to eat either honey or any bees that they can get hold of uh, and, and devour those you know, uh, as food sources. Uh, the floor goes on, like so. As I say, as the bees come in, they can land on this front landing board here, crawl up, into the hive, uh, through the gate. Uh, next we've got what's called a brood box. Uh, and this is, this is where the colony lives inside the hive, really. Uh, and and they, they colonise these frames that have wax on them uh, you can probably see if, if I hold that up nice and close to the to the to the camera that uh, you can see the hexagons there and the bees draw out their wax uh, they make wax they've got wax glands uh, and they draw out their wax and they create the what's known as the as the cells and what you probably more readily would refer to as honeycomb so this part is what's called the brood box this is where the the main colony lives, the queen bee, uh, and this goes onto the floor uh, and gives them direct access through the front gate of the, of the hive floor. Uh, next part, this is a really, really important part of the beehive for a beekeeper. Uh, this grill, uh, it's, uh, it's worked out at a specific size uh, and only the worker bees and the drones can get through this. The queen bee has a much larger abdomen than the other two types of bees in the hive. So you've got the queen bee, worker bees, and the drones, uh, and the queen cannot get through this metal grate. That's really quite uh, useful to us as the beekeepers. Um, this is called the queen excluder, and the idea of the queen excluder, that keeps the queen in the bottom part of the hive, the brood box, she goes about her duties in the bottom part of the hive, laying eggs, uh, controlling the hive, and as the colony expands and expands across and fills up the brood box, what the worker bees will do is they'll take the honey from inside the brood box, they'll move it up through the queen excluder into the second part of the, of the hive that goes on a minute, which is called the honey super. That's really important for beekeepers. If we want to extract honey from our hives, we have to make sure that, uh, that we separate the queen, the eggs, the larvae from the, from the honey super so that we can extract honey off quite easily without it being intermixed with, with eggs and larvae in the brood chamber. Queen excluder goes on next. Honey super, this is, this is where the, the bees uh, deposit all their honey once they're, once they're colony expands and becomes too big for the brood box at the bottom of the hive. Uh, this is a special one. We've got what we call racking in here, 
which is uh, these little section trays uh, and these mean that you can take out honey in an individual section uh, like you might buy cut comb from a health store like Holland and Barrett. Uh, that's, that's where the bees are going to pull out their, draw out their comb and deposit their honey and as a beekeeper I can easily access this and harvest the honey when the time is right during the, the year to, to do so. So that's the that's the honey super. I'll just put that back in when I've got that on the on the queen excluder. Bump, that's all sitting in there, nice and nice and snugly in there. So we've got our stand, we've got our brood box where the where the colony lives, uh, and then we've got our honey super separated off. Uh, by our queen excluder there, which uh, which is, as I say, for, for a beekeeper, that's a really important part of the hive. Feeders. This is a little feeder that we can feed sugar syrup. Again, if you're a, if you're a beekeeper and you're taking honey off of the hive, uh, the, the, the bees make honey to uh, see themselves through the winter, so they spend all of the summer foraging, collecting pollen, uh, and nectar producing bee bread which is pollen uh, and honey which sees them through the winter period when they can't get out and forage uh, if we extract the honey off the hive it's really important that we supplement them with uh, supplement their food supply with sugar syrup which they take back down into the hive uh, and, and feed off through the winter months finally the roof section uh, the roof section on this one this is, uh, this is uh, a really traditional looking uh, hive. It's got what we call a gabled end. Go straight on the top. So on the, on the beehive here, we've got this gable end, the splayed legs at the bottom. Uh, that gives this beehive a much, much more traditional look. Uh, again, you might not recognize uh, every single type of beehive, but there's one that you definitely recognize, which is a WBC hive which is a very traditional looking beehive. Got a nice uh, pitched roof on it. And this national hive, national hive refers to the size of the boxes and the depth of the frames that the bees and the honey is, uh, uh, is collected on inside the hive. So just to finish off there, we've got the, we've got the stand at the bottom with the, with the landing board. Uh, the next section up is called the brood box, where the, the colony and the, and the queen bee uh, spend most of their time. We've got a queen excluder, which is the mesh grill, which stops the queen bee getting up into our honey collecting super uh, and laying eggs. That means we can easily extract honey off. Then we've got our lid. Pull this all together and we've got what's called a national hive. This one, as I've probably said before, made in cedar wood. Uh, quite expensive but probably got a 30 to 40 year lifespan so in the next few days uh, I've got a queen bee arriving in the post uh, and I will be populating this hive either with an existing colony that I, I've got in my garden or I'll be building up a new colony from scratch and starting that off once I've started the colony off or populated this hive with a, with a colony I've already got then I'll start taking you through the, uh, the weekly hive inspections uh, and hopefully we might do some live sessions uh, and, and, and give you some, you know, a really good close look inside the hive, which I hope you'll join us for because it really is a fascinating, uh, you know, to, to, to understand what's going on inside this beehive, how the bees work, what goes on. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to taking you through those inspections in the next few weeks. Uh, join me then and, uh, and, and we'll go through the inside of the hive and give you a real close up look without getting uh, anywhere near chances of getting stung. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.